Today on the show, we're going to be talking about Hope Summers. If you didn't know that she's possibly the most important mutant created in the past 10 years, then this show is for you. So Hope Summers, she is a character that was created to help the X-Men comics transition into the direction that Marvel is taking them in at the moment. She first appeared in X-Men 205 in 2007. Now I do just want to clarify something, we know next to nothing about Hope Summers' biological parents. We only really know her biological mother's name, which was Louise. And aside from that, we just know she was adopted by Cable. So Hope is the first mutant baby born after decimation, and decimation is where Scarlet Witch lost control of her powers and used them to depower all but 198 mutants. And when Hope was born, Cerebro exploded and the hunt for the new mutant baby started. The thing is, the purifiers also didn't want this baby coming into power, so they attacked Hope's town and killed all of the children. Only Hope was saved by Cable. Cable believes that Hope is something of a messiah, destined to save humans and mutants, but Bishop and the Purifiers believe that Hope is an antichrist, destined to kill millions upon millions of humans. The baby is kidnapped and taken to Mystique, who is disguised as Mr. Sinister. Mystique takes the baby and makes it touch Rogue, in the hopes that it will wake Rogue up from her coma. And not only does it wake Rogue up, the baby doesn't die. While all this was going on, the X-Men, the Marauders, and Predator X would all be fighting, and after this fight, Scott Summers would decide that the baby is probably safer in the future with Cable. So Cable runs away to the future with the baby, but is chased by Bishop. Cable and the baby would eventually end up in a place called New Liberty. And in this place, Cable marries a woman called Hope, and Hope acts as the baby's mother, and Cable the baby's father. This peace would last for seven years, until New Liberty is attacked by these humanoid insects, and this would force the family to flee into the wastes. And in the wastes, after wandering for months, they are attacked by the president of these humanoid insects, and Hope is able to defeat him because she had been watching Cable fight for most of her life. Cable questions this insect as to the goings on in the rest of the world, and it turns out that Bishop had destroyed every other continent in the world, thus boxing Hope and Cable in North America. Soon after this, Hope Summers, the mother, would be killed by people in a settlement, and this is what causes Cable to name the child Hope Summers. In Messiah War, Hope would be kidnapped by Strife, who is basically Cable's evil clone that works for Bishop, and she'll be forced to watch Strife torture people until she was saved. When it came back time to go back into the future, Hope didn't want to go because she had bonded with Elixir in X-23. She wanted to stay in the present, so she kicked Cable mid-time jump, separating the two of them by two years. By the time Cable found Hope, she was now 11. There was something called A Girl Called Hope, which was really, really interesting, but we only really learned one important thing from it. Hope might possibly be the next host for the Phoenix Force. We know this because we saw the Phoenix in Hope's eyes. During the events of Second Coming, where Hope is much, much older, it would be revealed that she has the ability to manifest multiple different mutants' abilities, and she is able to use this power to defeat Bastion. After this, at a party that had a bonfire, everyone would be having a really, really good time, but then Emma Frost would notice the flames around Hope, and how they make the shape of the phoenix, and Emma Frost would remember Jean Grey as the phoenix, and she would panic and go to tell Scott Summers, but before she could tell him, he tells her that Cerebro has picked up new mutants from around the world. Hope is given the task of finding these new mutants, or these lights, and the first one is found in Canada, and she is about to jump off a building and kill herself. 
but Hope convinces her not to kill herself and touches her, and this activates the girl's X gene and gives her the ability to fly, and the girl agrees to follow Hope. The second light was a boy in Mexico called Gabriel, and he had the ability to move at super speed, but he was moving so fast that no one could see him, so Hope eventually touched him. This stopped his abilities and let him interact with the real world, but it was also revealed that he had aged slightly in using his abilities. The third was a girl called Idi in Nigeria, and she had pyrokinesis, and people wanted her dead because they believed her to be a witch child. Hope is able to save Idi from armed men, and as everyone is leaving, these armed men go to vehicles to hurt everyone, but Idi sets the vehicles on fire. It's then shown that one of Idi's pupils are red for fire, and the other is blue for ice. The fourth light would be a boy called Tion, and he would try to... Well, he would try to mate with Hope because his ability just puts him down to primal instincts. Hope touches him, and this makes him view Hope as his master from then on, and he will follow Hope to the ends of the earth. The fifth light would be a boy called Kenji from Tokyo, and a whole mess of things would happen with this one, but the only thing that you really need to take note of is that Kenji would join the team, and he would kind of kills some people from using his powers, so you kind of need to keep an eye on Kenji more than any of the other lights. Hope and the Five Lights would go to Utopia to learn how to use their powers a lot better, and it's during this time that Hope and Gabriel become very, very close and would share a kiss. It's also during this time that Hope meets Charles Xavier for the first time, and she calls him out on calling his school the School for Gifted Youngsters because she says this just increases the us and them mentality between humans and mutants. In her point of view, and in my point of view as well, a good future will begin when everyone is truly equal, so you can't have that us and them mentality. Another light would be found in Germany in a hospital, so all the lights and hope go there, and Gabriel would try to use his powers to scout the area, but he falls unconscious, and then Laurie falls unconscious. Tion goes in the building, and he seems to be immune to whatever's going on, so Hope deducts that there must be a telepath at work, and Tion is immune to this because he lives off of primal instincts, not off of thought. It then turns out that Kenji is also immune to telepathy, and he extends this ability to Hope, so everyone goes into the hospital, and they quickly find out that the light is actually a baby inside of its mother's womb that is too scared to come into life, so it's made everyone that's currently unconscious go into a zombie-like state. Tion is the one that's able to convince the baby to embrace life. He does this using a really simplistic version of language. And then when the baby is born, Hope uses her abilities to suppress the child's X gene, only to be activated when the child is much older. After Quentin Quire attacks the UN, Hope is watching news reports of Sentinels gathering, and she says that this means someone is going to die, because that's always what happens in this situation. Then when a mutant history museum opens while Idi is there, a new Hellfire Club attacks, and by the time the rest of the lights get there, Idi has pretty much slaughtered the Hellfire Club to death. Idi had to leave with Logan, and Hope wasn't really okay with this, but she accepted it. And then Pixie was asked to join the lights, because at this point the lights needed a teleporter to help new lights and old lights. Kenji would make no girl a body, but soon after this, the team are attacked by the Morlocks, and Hope would be forced to use her powers to control Kenji's powers, and Kenji was not okay with this, so he rebelled against Hope by making people in Utopia think they wanted Hope dead. No girl would then kill Kenji by disrupting his powers and destroying the body that he made her, thus making her have to be placed back in a containment unit. This would mark the end of the 17-issue series Generation Hope, which I enjoyed as it was being released, so I've put links to mycomicshop.com down below to where you can read Generation Hope. In Avengers X Sanction, Hope is present, and she has to stop Cable from taking out the Avengers and cure him of the techno-organic virus, 
and at the end of this, it is confirmed once and for all that Hope is indeed the new Phoenix. After this, Avengers vs X-Men would come about, which is this whole event where the Phoenix wants to use Hope as his next host, and the Avengers are convinced that the Phoenix wants to destroy the Earth, while the X-Men are convinced that the Phoenix wants to help restore mutant kind. So a whole war between the Avengers and the X-Men break out. Nothing really goes according to plan because the Phoenix ends up getting split across five mutants. It's a whole thing. I've got a whole video dedicated to it coming out in the new year. What you need to take note of is that once Hope finally does become the next host for the Phoenix, she and Scarlet Witch work together, say no more Phoenix, and after this the Phoenix would disperse around the Earth and create millions of new mutants around the world, thus restoring the mutant population and creating a whole new generation of mutants. After this, Hope decides she wants to be a normal girl and lead a normal life. And obviously that doesn't go according to plan, but if you want to find out what happens for yourself, I've put links to mycomicshop.com down below to where you can get the comics for yourself. I like Hope a lot. She was a character that was created for a purpose. That purpose was Avengers vs X-Men. And obviously since that's over now, writers are kind of like, well, what do we do with her? When in actual fact, there's a lot you could do with her just because of her concept. Like you could give her the Phoenix once again. What if the Phoenix didn't entirely leave her body? What if it still exists? All in all, Hope is a really great character. And I just think in the coming years, if she has the right writer and the right creative team behind her, she could be an amazing character. Possibly one of my favorites if she gets written right. It's super effective! Okay guys, that is it for today. So leave a comment down below if you think I forgot anything majorly important about Hope Summers. And also don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more history videos. And also don't forget to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, support the show by checking out my Patreon so I can make bigger and better and more history videos. And also don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel. My name is Faust, this has been Exploring Comics, and it is super effective.